What do 6.1 million women in the United States have in common? 6.1 million women have infertility in the United States today. So hey everybody, Dr. Jacques here. Welcome to Limitless Healing Episode 8. We're going to be talking into infertility again, but we're going to be talking about the top three things that your medical doctor does not want you to know. So do me a favor as usual, when you pop on here, go ahead, put your name down there and let me know what your favorite Rocky movie is. Okay, it could go into Creed as well. Go ahead, write that in the comment box and we'll get started here today. So what I found throughout my years of practice is there are three things, three main things that can cause patients to have infertility, which has also allowed me to be very successful when helping patients struggling with fertility issues. Number one, you're too stressed out. Number two, you're too toxic. And number three, you're broken. Save that one for later. So number one, being too stressed out. So we spent the previous weeks going over something very important, and that's basically your adrenal health and how that actually impacts your hormones. So when we're stressed out, I'm going to recap this again for you. For those of you who have not tuned in and watched those previous episodes, when you're stressed out, your body has a hormone called pregnenolone. And pregnenolone, what it does is it breaks down into progesterone, and then progesterone breaks down into cortisol. Just simply stated, okay? There's some other stuff that happens, but that's the main gist of it. So when we're stressed all the time, what's going to happen is we're going to take all of those hormones and convert it into cortisol, okay? And the next step would be cortisone, try to put out the fire. So when we're struggling with fertility issues, are we stressed out? 100%. Because why? Because we put timetables on ourselves. And whether it's our parents putting timetables on when we're supposed to get pregnant, how many kids we're supposed to have, how we're supposed to be a parent, why can't I get pregnant? I told my friend I was going to be trying to get pregnant and I still haven't. And ah, I'm stressed out, right? And just think about society today anyways. I mean, with COVID, everyone's, you know, probably not anymore, but people were freaking out about COVID, thinking that the world world was going to be ending. Everything in life is designed to stress us out. So that by itself is going to be one of the top things that's going to cause a lot of women to be infertile. And that's why, because the progesterone is just going to be tanked. And you can actually see that when you test it. You know, I just had a a patient who had postmenopausal postmenopausal hormones she was in her 20s in her 20s guys it's not normal but it's starting to become more of a pandemic than covid has more people are getting infected from infertility and really i mean if you think about well i won't dive into it but more people are dying or having issues with infertility than covid so let's keep this going here today guys let's keep it going so what can you do if we're stressed out yes there are definite things that you can do to try to help Whenever anybody is saying that they're working on getting pregnant, there's a couple of things that I I throw out there. These are just free tips for you. First off, never tell anybody that you're trying to get pregnant. Trying means that you don't believe that you have the ability to be able to do it. And then announcing it to everybody makes them automatically put you on a time crunch every month. Are you pregnant yet? Next month. Are you pregnant yet? Next month. Are you pregnant yet? Why aren't you pregnant? Why aren't you pregnant? Is there something wrong with you? Did you go get checked out? Did you have IVF? I had IVF. I had IUI. Everyone wants to put in their opinion, not just getting pregnant, but sure enough, when you are pregnant, people come out of the woodwork and tell you how you're supposed to deal with stuff, and it's it's frustrating. But <laughs> but anyways, so that stress, we want to try to eliminate that. So that's a really easy thing to do is just stop telling people that you're even trying to get pregnant because that's not going to help anybody out. It's not. The next thing to do is cut out inflammatory foods. Because if we're eating things like gluten, uh, dairy, corn, soy, uh, high fructose corn syrup, those in, those known inflammatory things, high sugars, if you want to get pregnant, you better start acting like you're pregnant now so that way you can have the healthy habits in play by the time you do get pregnant. So eat healthy foods. You know, if there's a diet that I would tell people to follow, follow, follow more of the, the paleo diet. Okay, we have the, a Well World app that we use for our patients where we can actually log it in there for you, and you can have recipes and diets and reminders and grocery shopping list. It makes it foolproof for you to be able to eat healthy. It's really, really nice. So that's a diet that's really nice. It's really easy because it cuts out a lot of those inflammatory foods. 
If you want to take it to the next level, there's paleo autoimmune dieting where it cuts out even more. Ultimately, that's up to you. I would start paleo first. See how you do with that one, okay? So don't tell people that you're pregnant or you're trying to get pregnant. And when you do get pregnant, don't tell anybody that you're pregnant, okay? It's your information to have. And start eating clean. Stop drinking alcohol. Stop pounding down energy drinks. I know a lot of uh, men start pounding down energy drinks and it has a, an effect on sperm quality because these other things that we're going to be talking about today are also going to be main causes that I see every single day causing people not just to have hormonal imbalances, but then also leading into infertility issues. Okay, I don't even really like the, the term infertility because it's just a label that just means your body isn't healthy enough right now to have a child. That's all it means. Okay, Your body should be capable. That's what we were designed for. So let's keep this going here. All right, so with the diet there too, something that's really important is people will automatically shift into doing more intermittent fasting or starving themselves or, you know, if you know you have hormonal issues, you have PCOS, you have endometriosis, you're usually going to be pushing towards a term called insulin resistance. If you have insulin resistance, it means that you require more insulin to handle the glucose that you're taking in or the sugar or carbs that you're taking in from your diet. So stress can cause that to raise, the insulin resistance to raise. Poor sleep habits also can cause insulin resistance. It also causes a spike in cortisol, which then causes that pregnenolone steal. So you better get your sleep now because when baby comes, you're not going to have all the sleep that you might want to have, okay? But it doesn't mean you can't do it. So start prepping your body as if you already have a child in there and you're going to have the best success when you do end up getting pregnant, okay? So let's talk about GI, all right? So you are you have infections, okay? You're toxic. So let's talk about GI infections. So I pulled up a ton of research, so I'm going to be popping back and forth, popping back and forth here. But one of the things that I noticed is this right here. So let me pull up this page. There we go. Awesome. All right. So this research article that I found here. So recurrent pregnancy loss is associated with leaky gut. Oh, my gosh. How many people do we know with leaky gut? Ah, there's so many people out there. So many people. Or as I would say, so much, so much, so many people with leaky gut. So what they're saying is not, do, not only does it cause pregnancy loss, but it causes inflammation to the endometrium. So the endometrial lining, where everything is basically necessary to be super calm, super healthy, super ready to go, leaky gut immediately causes inflammation to it and causes you to have pregnancy loss. Just gonna set that one out there for you, okay? That one's gonna be very important. Then we see this one right here, okay? Here we go. There's another one. Bacterial communities in semen for men of infertile couples. All right. Because this is really important. Let me pull this back up to me for a second. All right. So men can contribute to, I believe it's about 40% of infertility cases. All right. So it's not just the woman who needs to be taking care of themselves. If you truly want to be healthy, the best thing that you could do for yourself is make sure that you and your husband or you and your wife are getting taken care of and being healthy because healthy people have healthy kids. It's very important to note that, okay? Very important. So the different types of bacteria in the cultures there, there we go. All right, so <clears throat> basically finding that there were certain bacteria that crept into the seminal fluid and into the semen quality and it caused a decrease in basically all of your measurements. So we had... Um, Lactobacillus and Prevotella and Pseudomonas, they actually found that you need Lactobacillus, that good bacteria, to actually balance out the Pseudomonas because if you have a Pseudomonas infection, then what's it going to do? It's going to cause a decrease in your quality, vol volume, motility, everything that you need for your sperm to be good. So again, going back into the gut health, you really need to make sure that your gut is intact at a thousand percent in order for you to have the best chance of not just conceiving, but then also having a healthy kid. So very important to note that, okay? I'm going to leave that up there for a minute if you guys want to jot that one down there, okay? All right, so momentary timeout right quick. If somebody could put, I'm like all blurry on my screen, let me know. Am I blurry uh, coming through on the computer, whoever's watching on here? I'm going to keep moving on just in case I'm not. So, 
All right, so what else? Gut disorders, it's going to raise inflammation. So what we're already kind of talking about, if we have gut dysfunction, we have leaky gut, we have infections, it's going to cause our bodies to be in that fight or flight phase, which is going to increase cortisol. What did we already talk about with women and their progesterone? It's going to steal that progesterone. What about men? If we're having that same steal happen, we're not going to have our DHEA and our testosterone being created either. So what's going to happen? Our sperm quality is going to go down because we need healthy testosterone. Not only that, but our libido and our sex drive is also going to tank too due to stress. Because if you think about it, who wants to have sex when they're stressed out? I, I don't know many people. They might want to, but their ability to be able to is not, not at 100%. Okay, So just something to also think about. Make sure you have all infections clean and clear so that way you can have the best chance of conceiving and having the healthiest baby possible. Mama bears, this go to you, goes to you as well. If you have anything in on the gut, prime example, yeast. If you have some yeast overgrowth, if you have a child that's born while you have yeast, what are they going to have on top of their head? Okay, write that in the comment box. Thank you, Sharon, for saying it's clear for you. I appreciate that. So if babies are, are being born and mama has yeast, write in the comment box, guys, what condition is baby going to have? All right, I'll give it a second for the delay, but it's going to be cradle cap, all right? Super common, not the end of the world, but it basically shows you that mama bear didn't have the best microbiome for the baby to come out of because baby had yeast. So be careful feeding yourself dairy, sugars, inflammatory foods, especially if you're breastfeeding, because that's going to get passed on to baby. And if baby has excess yeast cultures in there, it's going to cause more colic and it's going to cause more really long nights for you. So just speaking from, you know, experience with my patients and things, it's very important to do this. And mom, you're, you're in for, for work. They call it the fourth trimester for a reason. It's because you have to work. It's hard work to have an amazing baby. That's why we love ours so much. He's crazy. He's awesome. All right, what else? So gut dysbiosis, okay, poor diet, lifestyle causes obesity. There are actually research studies that indicate that obesity is one of the leading causes for infertility. A lot of things happen before you get to that phase of being labeled obese. So we have to have poor diet, we're not moving, which is also really important in the article there. They tell you that exercise is really important as well. Good diet, proper diet is really important. And making sure we're making those rightful steps, sleeping well, okay? Staying up too late will lead to insulin resistance. That insulin resistance can lead to PCOS. PCOS can lead to excess weight gain. Can, that insulin resistance can also lead to endometriosis because your liver isn't going to be able to clear out the excess estrogens. And then if we have constipation on top of it, we can have a bacteria called beta-glucuronidase that's not going to allow you to get rid of your estrogens. So without getting too nerdy in that for you, obesity does have a direct link with infertility as well. So just a tip, start dieting. Okay, I'm not telling you to starve yourself. That's the exact opposite thing I'm telling you to do. I'm telling you to eat five meals a day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Okay, see if I can bend my fingers. And you have two... This, this finger doesn't work very well. Rock on. These two are little snack meals, okay? So hopefully my son's not watching. Otherwise, my wife's going to text me and say, how dare you say that? But eat something small. Get a protein shake in. Get a handful of nuts if you don't have an allergy or, or sensitivity to them. Make sure that your metabolism is constantly churning and burning. And I have a lot of patients who are realizing that the more they eat, the more weight they lose in a good way, okay? They're not losing muscle mass. They're losing fat, and they're putting healthy muscle on, which is also going to help you burn fat. So start prepping for your baby now. And I, I put on my Instagram feed too. You have to practice now because when baby comes, first six years of that child's life, that child is a sponge, okay? Past six years, of course, too. But the, the first six years are the most important. That's why they tell you to learn a language. They're constantly absorbing information. So they're watching you. They're watching how you eat. They're watching how you exercise. They're watching how you sleep. Are you lazy? Are you just sitting around all day? Or are you trying to get outside? Are you trying to get fresh air? Are you trying to go and do something? Okay? 
make sure you're making these habits now so that way when you do have the baby, you're good to go, okay? And the research on that here too, okay, is right here. Connection or connecting female infertility to obesity, inflammation, and maternal gut dysbiosis. Again, that's what I do every day. That's why when people come in and they say, I'm dealing with infertility, I've tried everything, tell them to run a stool test. Tell them to actually test their hormones, not just progesterone on one day, okay? Test, test everything. See where your hormones are going. See how your adrenal glands are being stressed out because this right here, this article right here is telling you that exactly what I do here in this office is exactly what you need to not just have a child, but then to also be healthy. Again, healthy people make healthy kids. That's it, period. Start being healthy now and don't ever get that diagnosis of infertility because that's just stressful in and of itself. Any label from, from medical or medicine is, is destroying people's memories and brains and stress. So forget about it, okay? Forget about it. Start taking care of yourself now before it comes down to an issue and you end up with a label, which I don't like labels, okay? All right. You're toxic. Level two. Guess what? I had to throw this one in here. I'm crazy. We're all crazy. Anybody who's listening to me on here can probably tune in and say yes, for sure. But heavy metals have a huge play in this as well. So there's a couple in particular. We have lead, cadmium, barium, and then arsenic are really big ones that lead into infertility. So I remember back when I worked in Dr. Zeno's office down in, in Houston, we always talked about chemtrails, okay? Chemtrails flying over top, you see crisscross patterns and all that stuff through the sky. And I remember that his son got tested for heavy metals and he had some heavy metals that were really high and he was super young. He's like, how the heck did this kid get heavy metal toxicity? So we started Googling through, of course, on the Googler, going through trying to figure out where could these heavy metals be coming from? And this is where my conspiracy theory side of things come. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, let's see if I have it in here. Well, I don't know if I have that research article on there. But chemtrails do have these things in them. So chemtrails, if you don't know, it's basically their way of being able to control climate, uh, to try to reverse climate change. They've been doing it since I think like the 70s or 80s. They're not doing a pretty freaking good job at it, which is another reason why the wildfires are going ballistic over in the West. But anywho, they have the technology to be able to change the weather. That aside, there are heavy metals that are being dissipated from the clouds or the contrails, chemtrails, sorry, chemtrails coming down to the surface, into the water. We drink the water. We then have heavy metal toxicity. It's also put in pharmaceuticals there's a lot of heavy metals a lot of them are made out of petroleum or petroleum based uh that's why rockefeller got into medicine in the early days is because he wanted to switch from what i use herbals to synthetics where he had the oil tycoon going okay just a fun fact so watch out for chemtrails okay and if you see him flying through the sky you could bet the weather's going to change the next day now you know all right so um yeah so for women I had this article pulled up. This isn't the one specifically for the chemtrails, but it does say associations with semen quality with non-essential heavy metals in blood and seminal fluid. Okay, Data from environment and male infertility. Study in Lebanon. That's a pretty cool place to get a study done from. Okay, So again, showing the research states that if you do have heavy metals in your body, you're toxic. Got to work on getting rid of them. Okay, It's important, but it's not smart to do this on your own. Uh, too many people try to do this and they don't know how to remove the heavy metals and it's not a good day for them because you're just throwing heavy metals all the way through your body and you have no clue what you're doing. So go to somebody like myself or somebody that I trust so that way you know what you're doing. All right. So <clears throat> the other toxic one. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I talk about this time and time and time and time and time again and to the point where in the past couple weeks, it's just been getting excessive. Mycotoxin illness mold toxicity and infertility okay first off mold crashes everything it crashes your adrenal glands stress okay because it's toxic it crashes your digestive tract which we already talked about in like four or five different articles and research articles there and the other thing it does there's a, a specific <laughs> easy for me to say there's a specific mold spore or mycotoxin called mycophenolic acid 
Okay, mycophenolic acid causes a lowering in your B and T lymphocytes, so it weakens your immune system. Okay, it causes recurrent clostridia or um, yeast infections or candida infections, and <clears throat> causes miscarriage. Okay, and congenital malformations. So if you're exposed to it, you have a very high likelihood of having a miscarriage. If you're exposed to it and you still don't have a miscarriage, you have a very high likelihood of having congenital abnormalities, okay? Could be born, who knows? There could be congenital things that when the baby's born, it's not safe, it's not healthy, it's gonna need a medical procedure in it. That is how important mold is. Guys, I can't stress this enough. I talked about it last week. If you think that you have mold toxicity or you think that your house is moldy, it's not a joke. If your neighbors tell you that it's not serious, tell your neighbors to go shove it somewhere, okay? Because this stuff is serious, it is researched, it is in the literature telling you that it is toxic and it is damaging to the body. That's why they shut down an entire wing of a hospital because they found mold all throughout the hospital. And this isn't just the black mold side of things. This, this particular mold is found in aspergillus and penicillin. The two of them like to grow together. Super common to find as well. So it's a common household mold, right? No, no, we see it a lot. It's not supposed to be there, so get the hell out of the house. Clean it. Test your house, test your body, make sure you're clean, all right? That's the third one for you being toxic. Could probably go into a million more, but I'm not going to do that, okay? So they actually found um, exposure to mycotoxins has been linked to potential cause of human infertility. Mycotoxins, let me pull it up here. Oh, here's the chemtrail one. Okay, this is from just some guy's site. Toxic heavy metals, shows you what's in there, okay? And then is this the mycotoxin? Oh, no, that's the research for the heavy metals, okay? So I just didn't pull those two articles up. I have them if you want them, just let me know, okay? So we talked about you're too stressed, you're too toxic, and what was the last one? You're broken. The heck do I mean you're broken? I'm a chiropractor, your spine. Get your spine analyzed. We're talking about all these external things, but at first, I'm a chiropractor, so if you're not getting adjusted by me, just make sure you're getting adjusted just to start, all right? We've had people who have been adjusted, and I didn't do any of this stuff because their bodies were good. They just needed the removal of interference, and they were able to conceive. They were able to get pregnant, okay? Very, very, very important. Now, if you've never been x-rayed before, don't worry. It's not the end of the world if you've been x-rayed before. It's not super toxic. Okay, we have digital x-rays nowadays. They have very minimal exposure. In fact, probably me standing under this fluorescent light right now, probably absorbing more radiation than if I went and just took x-rays on myself all day long. Okay? So, chiropractic is massively important. There are certain areas in the body that you need to look to make sure that you're getting proper function. Everything starts from above, down, inside out so if we have any subluxations or nerve interference anywhere from top to bottom you're not going to be able to get the function out to your reproductive organs so primarily down in your lumbar spine or your lower back just keeping it simple those are where we're going to be sending strength and energy out to your reproductive organs so if we have lumbar scoliosis we have too much of a curve we have too little of a curve. Oh, that's tight. Okay. If we're bent from side to side, if we're shifted, if we have one leg that's that's shorter than the other, that's going to cause inflammation. It's going to cause damage to those nerve roots, and it's going to decrease function out those nerves. It only takes the weight of a dime to decrease 60% function out your nerve roots. And I'm pretty sure you weigh a little bit more than a dime. So when we're shifted, it takes about two degrees, and boom, shuts off function make sure you're getting adjusted especially if you've been trying all of these other things and you still haven't been able to conceive yet make sure you get analyzed properly and make sure you get adjusted properly so that way your body has the ability to not only conceive but then also hold full term one of the biggest complaints for women as they go into second third trimester is low back pain why well if you're not getting adjusted you have this constant pressure right here you got this belly that's extending outward over here so it's causing your body to shift into this abnormal posture to cause a stress to those nerve roots. So we can have swelling in the legs and feet. We can have numbness in the legs and feet. We can have sciatic pain shooting down into the legs and feet. 
So guys, it's really important to get adjusted when we do get pregnant, or you, I don't get pregnant, <laughs> when you do get pregnant and you are going you know, full term, make sure you're getting periodic adjustments so that way your body can heal properly and your body can sustain the, the extra weight that you're putting on. It's a healthy weight, but it's a weight that you still need to have and it's displaced all in one area typically. Okay, so it's very important to make sure you're getting adjusted. Don't fear it. And if you know somebody like myself or somebody else that knows Webster technique, you can actually help to spin the baby down into position so they're ready to go and ready to go down and out. So those are the top three things that I would say whenever it's coming to infertility. It's what we see all the time in my office. That's why we test stool. That's why we test hormones. That's why we analyze the spine. We see where there is interference and see what we can do to put an individualized plan together for you so that way we can either remove the infections, remove the mycotoxins, reduce the stress, or whatever it is that we might need to do to make your body as healthy as humanly possible. So guys, as usual, I know there's a lot of information that I threw at you. This has been something that's been weighing on my heart because more and more people have been reaching out for infertility. And guys, it's not easy. Infertility is not easy to deal with. It's expensive, especially if you're going the medical route and you're getting uh, um, IUIs and you're getting in, uh, IVF, you're getting all these treatments, then you're having to shoot yourself with needles, then you have to do a trigger shot to try to get that. It's so much work and it's forcing your body, which is not ready. It's forcing your body, which is not ready to have a child. This might seem abrasive but if you were not able to conceive a child your body was not healthy enough to receive the child so if we have gut infections we have stress and we're doing progesterone we're doing suppositories we're trying to pump you full of progesterone more 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 awesome we got you pregnant well guess what your body's still sick as hell sorry it is are you still stressed out at your job they're not going to be giving you anything for that. Maybe they'll give you an antipsychotic or an antidepressant. That's not good for you, the baby. Okay? Are you working out too much? They're not going to talk to you about that. Are you working out too little? They won't mention that at all. What about your diet? What if your diet is absolutely awful? What if you have recurring UTIs, recurring yeast infections? You have mold exposure. You have mold. You're breathing in. That baby's going to get that too. Guys, it's really important that a symptom is always telling you that something is off in the body it's not that you're actually physically broken it's letting you know that there's some sort of interference somewhere throughout your body that is not allowing your god-given potential to shine there's something in the body that is not allowing your god-given potential to shine find it eliminate it and heal and I'll leave you guys with that. So thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, next week, we'll figure out a new topic. But as usual, this was something, again, it was near and dear to my heart. Uh, because, you know, people are told this all the time. All the time. And you need to have some hope. And you need answers. So reach out if you need to. Message me on here. Comment on the comment box. But you can always reach out. You can always find me at drjockmoser.com. And there's a free 15-minute discovery call if you click on that page. That we can actually have a phone call conversation where we can see if I can help you out with what you're dealing with. So take care, everybody. Have an awesome weekend, and I'll talk to you next week.